Good evening po sa inyo lahat. a special device or something. Okay, so let me just stand here. So, magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. Please, uh, I apologize for being late. So, malayo po nga ang pinundalingan. So, but uh, let's just make the most of what we have right now. No? Now, um, the title of the talk that I will give you, alam niya mga mainit na mainit itong uh, usapin ito, is yung uh, the recent Um, uh, legalization of same-sex marriage no, in the United States. No? Uh, and I entitled this talk, Stolen Identity. Okay? And then the subtitle will be, Why the Scottish Decision on Marriage is Not About Marriage at All. No? Um, for those who are not familiar with the term, no, the term Scottish is the Supreme Court of the United States. Okay? So that's the The, the term for Scottish, you know, the Supreme Court of the United States. And we know that uh, just uh, recently, you know, they legalized same-sex marriage. So what we'll be talking about tonight is um, we will try to give some objective viewpoints you know, by which we can reflect. You know, ano ba magiging implikasyon nito? You know? Although marami nagsasabi, oh, father, malayo pa naman yan sa ating bayan. You know? Pero let us not be too complacent. No? We know that when America sneezes, no, the world catches a cold. No? No? Pag kung ano mangyari sa America, ginagaya natin lahat. Eh, no? Kaya naman, let us not be complacent. It's, and it's very good that as early as now, we already have some viewpoints on how we will reflect on the challenges no, brought about by this social phenomenon no, that we call same-sex marriage. No? And then, it is also very important that we begin our discussion with reverence. No? Kasi alam natin na itong usaping ito ay very sensitive. No? Alam natin na itong usaping ito is they are, there are divergent opinions and sometimes very strong opinions. I know families who are really literally quarreling among themselves because of difference of opinion. No? Yung mga bata, no? uh, they find nothing wrong with it, no? and they find their parents na rin, okay, na mga old-fashioned kayo, no? or renounce of the medieval era. So, ganun yung pagtatalo ng mga, uh, mga pamilya. So, We have very strong opinions no, regarding this topic. No? And right now, siguro, as we are talking, you can uh, think of people who you personally know, who might be personally affected no, by, by this reality. No? Kaya maganda na we begin our discussion with reference no, because we know that this is something that hits home very personally. Now, This is Justice Anthony Kennedy, you know, the one who wrote the, the, the paragraph no, legalizing, uh, legalizing same-sex marriage in America. So, parang siya yung nagbigay ng um, summary statement no, regarding its legalization. So, tingnan ninyo yung sinulat ni Justice Kennedy. He said, No union is more profound than marriage. For it embodies the highest ideas of love, fidelity, devotion, sacrifice, and family. So, so far so good. No? Maganda yung kanyang pagtanaw at reverence on the institution of marriage. And then he says, In forming a marital union, two people become something greater than once they were. Now from that opening statement alone, you can already see where it is going. Two people. Uh, it, it did not say a man and a woman joined together. The, the sentence now is anonymous, two people. So it already gives you a clue on where they want to go. Pero ngayon na, dahil nga dyan, ngayon talaga, you really have to be very clear. I once heard a, a, a speaker says, children today do not need parents. So nagulat ko lang, what do they mean they do not need parents? Sabi niya, what children need today are a father and a mother. Kasi ngayon, there can be a father and a father as parents. No, a woman and a woman as parents. 
Kaya sabi niyo ngayon, what children, what children in our society needs today are not only parents. What they really need is a father and a mother. So you have to be very specific. Pero dito, di ba? Two people, no? Becoming something greater than once they were. No? But you already see that there is a contradiction in that statement. Kasi in our traditional understanding of marriage, we know that is true. Once a man and a woman come together, they become something greater than they once were. Why? Kasi when a man and a woman come together, nagkakaroon ng third reality. No? Unang-una, pag sila ay nagkaroon ng anak, no? that reality is very real, you have to give it a name. So you become something greater than you once were. So quite literally, no? kaya lang, with a man and a man, if they come together, do they become something greater than they once were? Okay. Nawawala, hindi naman talagang possible na magkaroon yung tinatawag natin a third party, no? Because we know, socially speaking, uh, by nature speaking, it's quite impossible for a man and a woman, uh, a man and a man, to have children, to bear children. At least not by their own. Okay? And then, it would misunderstand these men and women to say that they respect the idea of marriage. Then it is sinabi nila. Their plea is that they do respect it, respect it so deeply that they seek to find its fulfillment for themselves. Now, what can you find in that statement? Sinasabi nila, actually, gusto gusto namin eh, yung institution of marriage. We respect it very much. But we respect it very much that we want it for ourselves. Kaya lang ang problema, when they want it for themselves, we want to change it so that it can suit us. No? So, nakakaroon nyo rin ang problema. Parang ang analogy na ibibigay ko dyan is, I want to join your institution because I respect it so much. No? But you have to change your laws in order that I may join. Instead of me, conforming to your laws by as an institution so that I can join. Diba? And what, what do you call your group marriage, holy family, marriage encounter? I'm sure you have a bylaw and constitution no? before uh, someone can join. So imagine someone say, you know, I, I deeply respect no, the holy family marriage encounter, but change your laws so that I can join. Diba, there's something wrong with that. Instead of me uh, conforming myself according to your bylaws and constitution so that I can join and I can be accepted. No? Okay? So, you see the movement where we are going right now. No? Parang there is something naturally wrong. No? Their hope is not to be condemned to live in loneliness, excluded from one of civilization's oldest institutions. That's the problem. Marriage is civilization's oldest institution. Uh, philosophers call it a pre-political reality. Why? Why is it a pre-political reality? Because it is older than the state. Even before the state, there was already marriage. And therefore, it is marriage that builds the state and not the other way around. But what is happening today? The state wants to redefine marriage. Something that even, that even pre-existed it. Okay? And then, they ask for equal dignity in the eyes of the law, and the Constitution grants them that right so ordered. And so, with the decision of five against four, there were nine Supreme Court justices, and five decided for it, five out of four, uh, of, uh, no, four, five against four, so what happened? No, Same-sex marriage is now legal in all the states in the United States. At nabago ang kaulugan ang definition ng marriage. Okay? So that is the infamous uh, decision of the Supreme Court of the United States. 
Now, when I read this statement, I remember one text message that I, re I received. Ang sabi ng text message ito, The gospel is meant to change man, not for man to change the gospel to suit his actions. Ganyan ang nangyayari sa mundo natin ngayon. Eh. Instead of marriage changing us, we want to change marriage in order to suit our conditions. Balik tal, ano? Sa halit na yung Ibanghelyo, mababago tayo, baguhin natin yung Ibanghelyo. Sa halit na yung salita ng Diyos, mababago tayo, baguhin natin yung salita ng Diyos para ma-accommodate ma ma tayo. There is no man in the UK who wanted to sue the publisher of the Bible. <laughs> Because he said, the Bible contains anti-homosexual uh, statements that is causing him stress. And so he wanted to sue the publisher of the Bible. Ngayon, no, just now, itinitimanda natin no? para masuot ang ating conditions. Okay? So this is very true. Okay? Now, the question that we need to ask is this. How did we get there? So that's one of the first questions we want to ask. Paano tayo napunta sa state na ito? And then secondly, what do we do now? And then thirdly, where do we go from here? Okay? So let's answer the first question. How did we get there? Well, it's as old as the Bible. Okay? This is Michelangelo's illustration of the temptation of Adam and Eve in the garden. What was the temptation of the devil to Adam and Eve? Do you remember? Ano yung temptation ng devil? Yeah, eat the fruit, pero bakit daw? Bakit? Ah, okay. So, kailangan natin i-review, ha? Ang sabi ng devil, you will become like gods. Para ngayong magiging Diyos. Now, Totoo naman, when you read the Bible, that is the intention of God. Diba? We are created in the image and likeness of God. So God wants us to become like God. Pero what is the plan of God? God wants us to become like Him with Him. The temptation of the devil is, be like God apart from God. Be like God against God. So, yun know, temptation ng devil. Grab divinity from God. Huwag niyo siyang sundin kasi kalaban niyo siya. Huwag kayong magtiwala sa salita niya. Decide for yourselves and you will become like God. No? That is the symbolism of eating of the fruit. At ano naman ang ginawa ng tao? Kinain nga nila yung fruit. Why? Because we want to become like God. But, apart from God. Yan. Yan yung temptation ng devil. So what is the primordial temptation? Therefore, ayaw natin kilalanin ang pagka-Diyos ng Diyos sa atin. Ayaw natin lumuhot sa harap ng Diyos. You know, when I think about this, I remember one desert father, no? uh, which uh, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger wrote about The name of the Desert Father is Abba Apollos. Sabi ni Joseph Ratzinger, Abba Apollos was once praying to God. At yung kanyang prayer to God, sabi niya, Lord, I want you to show me the figure of the devil so that I can avoid him. And he was given a vision of the devil. And according to Abba Apollos, sabi niya, the devil looks like a man. But a distorted man, no? no, my arms, my feet, no, my head, no? but it is distorted and ugly. And then Abba Apollo said one very curious detail. Sabi niya, the devil had no knees. Walang tuhod, yung demonyo. Paalam, dire-direcho, walang tuhod. Bakit? He doesn't want to kneel down. The devil cannot kneel down. And Joseph Ratzinger said, the inability to kneel 
is the mark of the diabolical. The unwillingness to kneel down is the mark of the diabolical. Ganyan yung temptation ng devil eh. Don't kneel before God. No? Be like God apart from God. Ayan. Kaya ganyan, gusto natin maging Diyos. Instead of accepting what nature tells us about what marriage is, anong sinasabi ng tao? No. I will decide what marriage is. Okay? How did we get there? It's as old as the Bible. Okay? Now, this is René Descartes. This is now the time of the around mga 15th century. Now, ang sabi ni René Descartes, I think, therefore, I am. That is his philosophy. I think, therefore, I am. Anong sinasabi ni René Descartes? Kung ano yung iniisip ko, yun ang magiyari. Kung anong iniisip ko, yun ang katotohanan. That is reality. John Paul II says, this is the motto of modern rationalism. No? That everything is dictated by the thought of man. Kung anong iniisip ko, yan ang magiyari. Okay? Now, this is again Justice Kennedy, the same judge who wrote the same-sex marriage decision. This is their uh, closing statement when they legalized abortion in the United States. Siya rin yung legalized nun eh. Now, look at his decision. Ang sabi niya ganito, At the heart of liberty is the right to define one's own concept of existence of meaning of the universe and of the mystery of human life. Bilo mo, tao na mag-decide of the meaning of the universe. Of one's mystery, of the meaning of human life. Bakit nila sinabi yan? Kasi ang sabi nila, hindi naman tao yung nasa sinapapunan eh, ng babae. Dumulong yun. And so to justify their actions, what did they say? I will decide the meaning of human life. I will decide the meaning of existence. Ayan, na nauulit na naman yung temptation ng devil. No? You will become like God. Decide whether that is a person or not in order to justify our actions. And then sabi ni William James, he is a famous professor. Sabi niya, natakaroon na ngayon yung tinatawag na de factualization. What is de factualization? We no longer care about the objective truth or fact. Everything is my opinion. No? He calls it de factualization. Naalala ko when I was uh, taking an oral comprehensive exams. Ang sabi ko sa professor ko, sabi ko, as a father, I think I, uh, in my opinion, I think, I don't care about your opinion. This is an exam. Give me the facts. I'm not after your opinion. Oo nga naman, no? What we want are facts, not simply opinions. Yung mundo natin ngayon, we don't care about facts anymore. Everything is about my opinion. That is the factualization. Kaya ano consequence na? Kailan na niya ito nalakin to? Si Bruce Jenner? No, lalaki, lalaki. Ano, guwapo, guwapo. He won several medals in the 1970 Olympics. He is Bruce Jenner. Pero ngayon, he is now Caitlyn Jenner. Okay? Sabi niya, I decided that I am now a woman. So ngayon, nagpa-vest implants. No? And this is how she looks right now. And she is, he is now the cover of uh, Vanity Fair. Tinda <laughs> sabi niya, from now on, I will be called Caitlyn Jenner. You will become like gods. Diba? I think, therefore, I am. Pag inisip ko na babae ako, babae ako. Okay? Ganyan eh, di ba? Yan ang consequence niya eh. Ang tawa, pag tumayo po ako sa inyo dito, yun ay say, I am Caucasian. 
我对你挺有名，那明天爸不留黄发的，有点 confused， OK？ Now once someone asks me, he is a confused man. Tapi ya, bagi siapa confused? If he is not confused, then no one is confused. Tiga? Kalau ini sih nali lito, ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali lito. Kalau ini sih nali lito, kalau ini sih nali Now, sabi ni Peter Crave, the fault of the modern man is not ignorance of the truth, but ignoring the truth. No? Yan yung kultura natin ngayon eh. Alam naman natin ang katotohanan eh. Na si Bruce Jenner, kahit na magpasaksak siya ng boobs, ang sabi niya later on, ipapatanggal niya yung kanyang genitals. Magpapasexual change siya. No matter what he does outside, his DNA is still a male DNA. He is still Bruce Jenner. May nakakatawa nga yun noong Father's Day. Nag-celebrate pa rin sila ng Father's Day. Kinuha niya yung kanyang mga anak na niya na celebrate Father's Day. And then sabi ng kanyang mga anak, no matter what happens, you are still our father. Ding, ding. Correct. No matter what happens, lalaki pa rin yan. Okay. Pero yung ating kultura, yung sinasabi, hindi ko ba iyako. Okay? Okay. Now, yung yung sinasabi ng kultura natin ngayon, equality leads to, or necessarily leads to, justice. Kaya everyone talks about marriage equality. Okay? Now, I saw once this picture. This is equality. Bakit? Kasi dapat pantay-pantay ang kanilang tinutungtungan. Now, this is equality. Pero meron bang justice? Wala, di ba? Kasi justice is not mathematical equality. Okay? Sometimes we think na para maging magkaroon ng justice, dapat pareho lahat. Dapat pantay-pantay lahat. Dapat everybody is uniform. But you know, sometimes equal treatment can be the most unequal treatment. Di ba pag mayroon kayong may, may anak kayo, bawa dalawa anak mo, yung isa may sakit. Di ba binibigyan mo ng mas attention yung may sakit kasi minsan walang asit o walang sakit? Pwede mo huwag sabihin na, hindi, dapat equal treatment, equal attention. Pag walang equal attention, there is injustice. Hindi. Mas masarap na yung pagkain na binibigay mo eh. Doon sa may sakit eh. Bakit? Kasi we recognize that everyone is different. Ito ang tunay na justice. Now, there is no equality, but there is justice. Ang problema ng mundo natin ngayon, pag sinabi natin equality in marriage, kailangan pareho. Whether you are a man, and a man, and a woman, and a woman, call it marriage. No? Walang pagkakaiba. Yan. So we no longer recognize the difference between a male and a female. Bakit? Kasi sabi natin kailangan justice. Yan. Now, pag justice nang hinahanap natin, equality, ayan, pwede ganyan ang mangyari. Eh, nung nangyari, pag may equality, sinong nagsasuffer? Minsan yung mga bata. Bakit? Kasi, what is the first right of a child? Even in the United States uh, Constitution, uh, United Nations Constitution, what is the first right of the child? Di ba? To have a father, and a mother. But with this kind of definition of marriage, what will happen? We are consciously depriving children of their primary right to a father and a mother. So yung marriage ngayon, nagiging adult-centered. 
no longer child-centered. Ang lagi nang iniisip, yung kapakanan na adult, hindi na natin iniisip ang kapakanan na mga bata. Ayan. Because of the so-called equality. Now, what do we need to do? We need operation reclamation. We need to reclaim the original definition of marriage. That is why I entitled my talk, Stolen Identity. Kasi tinatakaw ang kultura, ang kahulugan ng mga bagay-bagay. Halimbawa, the word gay. Originally, the word gay was very innocent. Pero ngayon, pag sinabi mong gay, iba na ibig sabihin eh, di ba? Eh, pag sinabi mong gay, ibig sabihin, masaya yung tao. Naalala ko, minsan, at na yung magkakasama kami ng mga mga seminarista noon, no? may naglit na seminarista, nasa bus kami. Sabi ng isang seminarista, Lord, thank you for this day. Make us happy. And then sabi ng mga seminarista, and gay. And then sabi niya, no Lord, just happy. <laughs> uh, kasi iba na ibig sabihin ng gay ngayon. Eh. Sabi niya, no Lord, just happy. <laughs> okay nga naman, ano. Okay. The word rainbow. Before, in the biblical times, ibang ibig sabihin ng rainbow. Pero ngayon, ano yung rainbow? It became the symbol of the LGBT community. Kasi sabi nila, rainbow is maraming kulay. So, diversity. Pero, what is the original meaning of the rainbow? Where did the rainbow appear first in the Bible? Kailan unang lumabas yung rainbow? After the flood. Why did it appear after the flood? Yeah, open hand. Pero it is a symbol of God telling man to reproduce again. Begin again. Kaya nga ang sabi ng Diyos kay Noah, kumuha ka ng lalaki at babae ng hayop. Lahat ng hayop dapat lalaki at babae. Male and female. And after the flood, the rainbow appeared. Why? Because it is a symbol of God telling man, go forth, multiply. Nakita niyo kung paano na-distort na yun? Instead, originally it meant man and woman, male and female, go forth and multiply. What does the devil do? Let us get something beautiful and let us distort it according to our own image. Ayan, kaya ngayon, iba na ang ibig sabihin ng rainbow. This is my body. Originally, in the Bible, it meant sacrifice. This is my body, give it up for you. What did the devil do? Get that motto, let us use it for abortion. This is my body. I can do whatever I want with my body. I will kill the child inside my body. You see the, 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 the ways of the enemy? They will get something originally beautiful and distort it according to their own agenda. Okay? So we have to reclaim. What do we need to reclaim? Okay? Number one, love and gender. We need to reclaim how we understand love and gender. Secondly, we have to understand No, the meaning of love and tolerance. Thirdly, the interpretation of desire. And then fourthly, what makes marriage a marriage? Okay, so yan yung ating nire-reclaim. Number one, love and gender. Lagi natin narinig itong slogan na to. No? People fall in love with a person, not a gender. Totoo nga naman, di ba? People fall in love with a person, not a gender. Uh, laging may lumalapit sa akin, Father, why can't a man love another man? I was asked a question once, that question. Father, why can't a man love a fellow man, another man? Anong sagot ko doon? At ano dapat ang sagot natin doon? Well, you can love another man. No, nowhere in the Bible does it say that you cannot love another man. No? 
In fact, Jesus loved John. Di ba kaya nga anong title ni John? The disciple Jesus loved. So, Jesus loved John very dearly. In fact, in the Last Supper, si John nakahimlay pa sa dibdib ni Jesus. David loved Jonathan. Okay? Jesus loved Lazarus. That is why he even wept when Lazarus died. So there is nothing wrong with a man loving another man. But if you mean loving, having sex with another man, ay, ibang usapan na yan. Yun ang atin yung sinasabi ng kultura natin eh. When they say, why can I not love another man? What they are actually asking is, why can I not have sex with another man? Now, ibang usapan na yun. A man can love another man, but a man cannot have sex with another man. Why? Ano ba yung sex? Ano ba talaga yung sex? Di ba sabi natin, sex is, okay, an act that a male and a female do in order that a child may bring forth, no? may be brought forth. So that is the definition of sex. No? It is my pleasure and then my purpose. What is the pleasure of sex? Bonding. What is the purpose of sex? Babies. So sex is for babies and bonding. Pleasure and purpose. Anong ginagawa ng kultura natin ngayon? Kinakalimutan yung purpose. Ang gusto lang natin, pleasure. But sex is not only for pleasure. Sex is also has a particular purpose. A man and a man can have pleasure in sex. But they can never have the purpose of sex. And this is the reason why a man can never have sex with a man. Just as a woman can never have sex with a woman. Now, ito, uh, after all, we are all adults. Dabi uh, niko na rin ito in a forum. So sabihin na lang, why father? Wala naman pagkakaiba yun, di ba? As long as the key fits the keyhole. You know what I mean, di ba? Uh, homosexual sex, sabi na lang, pwede naman mangyari yan eh, no? It fits. No? We're talking about anal sex, of course, no? which is homosexual sex. Sabi na lang, as long as the key fits the keyhole, pwede na. Pero, this is the analogy that I gave, I always give. Remember yung mga game show noon, where there is, uh, 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 merong kahon na nakalak yung kahon, merong kandado, uh, and you are given several keys. No? And then you will try to fit all the keys into that uh, lock. Pero, isa lang ang magpagbubukas, di ba? Lahat ng susi ay pumapasok. Pero, nagbubuksan ba lahat? Hindi. Ano lang yung mga pagbubukas? Doon sa kandado. Yung kanyang proper complement. Kasi, every kandado has his particular complement na susi. Pwede pumasok ang lahat ng susi. Pero hindi niya magbubuksan. It cannot unlock it. Parang ganyan yung homosexual sex eh. Papasok yan. But it will not unlock life. It will not produce life. And this is the reason why a male can never have sex with another male. Lagi na lang sinasabi, eh, mahalaga lang naman pag-ibig, di ba? Hindi naman pag-ibig lang eh. Kailangan you must also be capable of engaging in the act. No? Marami tayong mga taong binamahal natin, but we don't have sex with them. Di ba? For example, I love my brothers and sisters, but I don't have sex with them. Why? Because that is not cool, the marriage. I love my friends, but why don't I have sex with my friends? Because our relationship is not called a marriage. 
So it is not true that because simply I love someone, I can enter into a marriage with that person. Okay? So yan yung unang dapat natin i-reclaim, no? People fall in love with the person, not the gender. And then, lagi na lang sinasabi, love has no gender. I agree. But sex does. Okay? So don't forget that, no? Love may have no gender, but sex does. Sex requires the complementarity of the gender. The male and the female. Okay, second, yung our understanding of love and tolerance. No, ngayon, no, very usong-usong na ito, slogan, don't hate, love and tolerate. No? Meron problema yung kultura natin ngayon eh. Bakit? Kasi sa kultura natin ngayon, if you don't agree with me, anong tawag sa'yo? No, you're a bigot and a hater. Di ba? Uh, I have here a quotation very recently si Leia Sanonga no? uh, in interview sa uh, Rappler. No? Tinanong siya about same-sex marriage. This was the response of Leia Sanonga. Sabi niya, Jesus gave two commandments. First, love God with all your heart and so on and so forth. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. And then he said, she said, So did he say, therefore, unless that a person happens to be gay or lesbian or trans? Last time I checked, those words were not in the Bible. And I'm not going to make an assumption, therefore, that Jesus Christ, more than 2,000 years ago, made those exceptions. And I'm sure that gay people existed even back then. So when you say, love your neighbor, that has to be all encompassing. It cannot just be, it can't be like a cafeteria neighbor. So sinasabi niya, love your neighbor must include everyone. Kasi pag hindi mo tinanggap ang everyone, oh, you're a big one, you're a hater. Ang iyong pagkakamali ng ating kultura ngayon, we confuse unconditional love with unconditional approval. Okay? We confuse unconditional love with unconditional <coughs> approval. Now, Jesus loved everybody in the Bible. That is true. Diba? He loved everyone, including the sinners. But did He approve everyone? Did He approve everyone? No. In fact, Every time he would encounter a sinner, ano lagi nang binibilin? I accept you, but go and sin no more. So we must be able to distinguish between the person and the action. Should we love gay persons? Absolutely. We should love them. But should we approve Everything that the gay lifestyle represents, absolutely not. Why? To say unconditional love is not the same as unconditional approval. Di ba kayo mga magulang? Pag tatanong niyo kayo, do you love your children? Of course. Do you love them unconditionally? Of course. Uh, may magagawa ba yung inyong mga anak na makakapagpabawas ng pagmamahal niya sa kanila? I'm sure sasabihin niya sa akin, nothing father, nothing they do can make me love them less. Pero itong tanong ko, does that mean that you will approve everything that your children will do? Hindi, di ba? May mga bagay silang gagawin na hindi mo ina-approve. But it doesn't make, it doesn't mean that you love them less. So unconditional love does not mean unconditional approval. Eh yung kultura natin ngayon, yun ang problema. If you don't approve what another person does, automatically tinatawag ka, oh, you're a hater, you're a bigot, hindi ka nagmamahal. Not necessarily. Okay? Not necessarily. Okay? Okay, 
maganda tong uh, image to yung to, ang sabi. If a homosexual was hungry, would you offer them food? Yes. If a homosexual was hurt, would you assist them in seeking medical help? Yes. If a homosexual was hurt, would you assist them in seeking medical help? Yes. If they need shelter, would you offer them a place? Yes. If they, if they are lost, would you help them find their way? Yes. If they broke down on the side of the road, would you stop, offer them assistance? Yes. If they are drowning, will, they, will we help them? Yes. But if they want a cake for their gay wedding, would you bake them a cake? No. Okay. Because if you make them a cake, that would already mean approval. Diba? Pero ano nangyayari sa mundo natin ngayon? Oh, kung hindi ka gumawa ng cake, oh, you're a bigot. You're a hater. You remember the trouble in the United States? They lost their business. Because a cake, a, a cake, no, a gay couple wanted them to bake them a cake. When they refused, they were sued. Anong ginawa ng gobyerno? Pinagbayad pa yung baker. Kaya anong nangyari? They lost their business. They were forced to close down. Pero ang tanong ko, wala bang ibang mag-bibig ng cake para sa iyo? Eh talagang tinatarget nila ngayon ang mga Christian. Nananadya eh. Ang dami-daming atheist, the baker, na pwede mo silang ipag-bake ng cake. Maraming mga gay, the baker, na pwede mo silang ipag-bake ng cake, but they want to target the Christians. At anong nakalulungkot? Yung gobyerno, gano'n naman ang ginagawa. Pinay-persecute din ang mga Christians. Oh, you don't want to bake them a cake, uh, you will lose your license. Kaya ngayon, yung religious tolerance, nawawala na rin. Ayan. So, sino ngayon ang nabay-persecute? Mga Christians. Okay? Okay. Now, uh, desire. The third thing that we need to recover. Desire. We need to redeem our desire. Kasi yung mundo natin ngayon, ang sinasabi, basta gusto ko, dapat I should act on it. No? I should act on it. Pero, ibig sabihin ba lahat ng ating desire, we should always act on it? Not necessarily. Kasi minsan yung ating desire, it is misdirected. Minsan, nakita ko yung anak ng kuya ko, pumunta ko sa bahay. Gusto niyang dilaan yung fly swatter. Ngayon yung pinapapatay yung lamok. Di dilaan, ganyan ako. Nung makita ng kuya ko, anong ginawa niya? Kinuha niya lang yung fly swatter. Kinalitan niya ng popsicle. Kinalitan niya, yun, sige, dilaan niya, dilaan, walang problema. Okay? Now, the problem is not the desire. The problem is, saan tayo nagpupunta para isatisfy yung ating mga desire? Kasi minsan yung ating desire is neglected, eh, di ba? Hindi natin alam kung tama yan o bali. So, ano kailangan natin gawin? We have to redeem our desires. Kasi yung bawa right now, what if I have a desire for another woman who is not my wife? Should I act on it? No. What if I have a desire for a young person, an infant, or a, or a child? Should I act on it? No. Hindi lahat ng ating desire dapat ina-act out natin. It is the same with our sexual desire. So what should... Yung sexual desire, gano'n eh. Kailangan according to its design. Pag hindi according to its design, ano mangyayari? We will not reach our destiny. One concrete example about sexual desire. Yung reality po ng STD, or sexually transmitted disease. Bakit nagkakaroon ng STD? Nung nirekaba ng Diyos ang sex, may kasabang STD? Wala. Sex is beautiful. But sex is beautiful according to its design. Now, what is the design of sex? Dapat monogamous and faithful. 
Kasi pag ikaw naman ay nagsisex, at isang tao lang ang kasex mo, you will never have STD. Bakit nagkakaroon ng STD? Kasi po yung STD, bunga yan ng maraming sexual partners. So yung paglabas ng STD, that is already an indication that we are not acting on our sexual desire according to its design. Kaya hindi natin nare-reach yung ating destiny. Kaya nagkakaroon ng STD. Kasi hindi natin sinusunod yung plano ng Diyos para sa sex which is monogamous and faithful. Now, apply that to same-sex marriage. Yung sexual desire ba dapat ginagawa in homosexual sex? Hindi rin. Bakit? Nature itself will tell us ano ang number one source of HIV transmission. Ano ang number one source of transmission of HIV and AIDS? Ah, Nagbabasa tayo ng news. Saan natin nangyayunig? Saan very prevalent? In the sector of men having sex with men. Hindi po yan bigoted, ha? hindi yan hate. That is scientific fact. Bakit sa sector ng men having sex with men, napakalakas ang transmission ng HIV and AIDS? Now, I will say this with reverence. No? Puro naman tayo adults eh. Kasi po yung anus, it is not meant for sex. Pag nagkaroon ng anal sex, anong nangyayari? Nagkakasugat. Kasi the anus was, meant, was not meant for friction. Kaya ang infection direct sa bloodstream. Kaya napakarami ng infection among men having sex with men. Kasi direct sa bloodstream ang infection eh. Now, nature is already telling us that sex was never intended to be that way. Yan. So, anong pinapaalala sa atin? No? Let us orient our desire according to its design and then we will reach our destiny. Okay? So, we have to reclaim our desires. Okay? Maniwanag po yan so far? Yeah, no? Okay, last point. What do we need to reclaim? Okay. Okay, marriage. No? Sabi ng sign na nakita ko, marriage is the union between man and woman. Anything outside this is a mirage. Tama nga naman, ano? Anything outside this is a mirage. What is a mirage? What is another word for mirage? Parang illusion or a fake, no? A poor imitation. Pero ano ba talaga ang marriage? What makes marriage a marriage? Pag pinunta natin sa dictionary, this is the definition of marriage. It is the permanent union of a man and a woman committed to each other for life, dedicated to the procreation and education of children for the good of society and the continuation of the human race. Now, if a man and a man enter into a marriage, will they fulfill this definition of marriage? No. Why? Unang-una na lang, procreation is impossible. No matter what they do, a man and a man can never procreate. Sabi na lang, eh, Father, pwede naman kami mag-adapt eh. Eh, saan nang galing yung inadapt nyo? from a man and a woman. O, hindi po malik ka sa original definition of marriage. Na parang mirage lang talaga yan. No? Naghiram ka lang. No? Pero hindi pa rin kayo pwede magkaroon ng anak. Okay? Now, for the good of society, ito ang magandang itanong natin. Yung marriage of man and man, what good is that for society? Can you give me one? What good will it do for society if a man and a man marry? May good for society ba yan? 
Hindi, baka naman ako lang ang nagsasabi ko na. Bigyan niyo po ako. Population control. Ha? Population control? Eh, pwede rin gawin ng babae at lalaki yan eh, no? Natural family planning eh, no? So, actually, wala na lang eh. It has no benefit for society. That is why the, the, the government should focus their attention on traditional marriage instead of this kind of marriage. Kasi wala namang good for society eh. Pero a man and a woman entering into a marriage, does it have benefit for society? Yes. Unang una, they, ha they are capable of procreating children. And therefore, the continuation of the human race. Because if marriage is a man in a man or a woman in a woman, the human race will no longer continue. Now, kung ganyan pala ang marriage, ano dapat ang iniingatan ng gobyerno? Dapat yung traditional marriage. Hindi yung kung ano-anong definition ng marriage. Okay? That is why we need to reclaim the definition of marriage. Eh ngayon kasi ang definition ng Supreme Court, for as long as two individuals love one another, they can get married. Ganun na lang ang definition, love na lang. I love my sister, but can I marry my sister? No. I love my friends, but do I marry my friends? No. Bakit? Kasi marriage is all of this. <clears throat> Hindi lang love. Sa marriage, meron din love eh. Pero what makes marriage and a marriage? Kailangan merong complementarity of man and woman. Dapat may procreation. Dapat may good for society and the continuation of the human race. If that is not present, that is not marriage. It may be love, but it will not be marriage. Okay? Maliwanag po sa far? Okay. So, now, with that as a last point, ito ngayon yung mga different elements of marriage that should always be present to make it truly a relationship of marriage. Dapat may covenant of fidelity. You know, according to studies, sabi nila, yung mga same-sex couples daw, they do not really last. Part of the characteristic of same-sex relationships is that they are only temporary. Now, maraming mga psychologists ang nagsasabi, maybe the reason is this. Bakit laging nagahalap ng bago, ng bago, ng bago? Sabi ng ibang psychologists, di ba mayroong principle, you cannot give what you do not have. Pero mayroon din isa pang principle. You cannot receive what you already have. So same-sex marriage, ganun eh. What will you give me that I already have, that I do not have? Everything that you have, I already have. Well, mas maganda pa ngayon sa akin eh. Baka mag-away pa kayo. Kaya hindi naglalas eh. Kasi you cannot give anything that I do not have. Pero ang, ang, ang union ng lalaki and babae, why is it fulfilling? Because you can give me something that I do not have. And I can give you something that you do not have. Bakit? Kasi we are compliments. Kaya nga yung salitang compliment, doon nang galing yung salitang complete. We can only be completed by our compliment. Okay? Yung lalaki, you cannot complete me. Only a woman can complete me. Okay? No matter how much we love each other, you cannot complete me. Di ba? Maliwanag yun. So, dapat may fidelity. And then, sexual complementarity. Ayan, dapat compliment kayo. And then, the possibility of sex and procreation social benefit and the sustenance of the human race. That is what makes marriage a uh, marriage. Okay? Kaya yung title ko kanina, Stolen Identity, Why the Scotus Decision on Marriage is not marriage at all. 
Okay? So, uh, I'm looking at my watch and I can see that it's already 10 o'clock. So, hindi ko na po ipagpapatuloy, you know. I hope that the little that I gave you will give you enough points you know, to think about and then to reflect upon. No? Just uh, some points uh, for your personal reflection. Okay? Uh, marami po sana tayong pag-uusapan pero but I think that will be enough for now. Okay? Maybe next time. Okay? So thank you very much and magandang gabi po. Thank you.